Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today I'm going to attempt to fix the floppy disk drive in my little Amiga 600 here. This is my Amiga 600. It has been working quite well since I recapped it and cleaned it up and things like that. Got donated to me by Katrina years ago, but recently the floppy disk drive that's still in here stopped working. If I put a floppy disk in here, the disk drive itself is reacting, but it's not recognized by the system that there's anything in there. So I think we might have a problem with the disk drive itself. Might be a problem with the Amiga. We are going to take a look at that in this episode, I guess. Not even easy to open this up. <laughs> There we go. Because the keyboard on this Amiga is attached to the top cover here. So the thing is, uh, the keyboard assembly is on the top cover in these Amigas. And there's a little connector for the LEDs, this here we have to remove and we also have to remove uh, the keyboard connector itself i think although we can just put it like this i guess for now so yeah we have kick 3.2 in here as i thankfully labeled we have uh, an rgb to hdmi in here and we have our furia ec 20 revision 3. this gets pretty warm but so far no issues with it it has been recapped I did that in a video. It also has a memory expansion in here. We're going to be concerned with the disk drive today. So we're going to take that out. I think it's probably just this one screw that's left here. Yeah. And then we can take the disk drive out and give that a clean. And if I'm not mistaken, it might be the capacitors on the disk drive PCB that got wonky. Because uh, I didn't even look at this, I think it just worked and I didn't even clean it or look at it any, any further when I first got this machine because it just worked, basically. I'm just going to mark the polarity. Oh, I already did last time. <laughs> That's what I usually do before taking one of these out, marking the polarity where the red cable is. So the red uh, connector on this cable here usually is pin 1. Mark that. And on this it's uh, the positive five volts i think so it's always good to not reverse that cable if you reverse the floppy disk uh, data connector nothing's going to happen to the drive but if you reverse the supply voltage connector you might run into some trouble so yeah we're just going to take this out carefully and have a look at it oh and i can already see at least one surface mount capacitor in there. That might indeed be the issue here. So here it is. It's a Panasonic JU253043P. That's uh, the model that was originally in there, I assume. And I think we can get the shielding off here by just removing these two screws here. Let's see if my screwdriver is small enough. Yay! <laughs> I had too much coffee. So there we are. That actually looks pretty clean. That's good. But yeah, there's that one capacitor here that is a 10 microfarad surface mount capacitor that I didn't replace during my recapping. And this could also use some new grease, I guess. Like here on this worm gear, you want to grease that because that's where the head travels on. Yeah, other than that, it looks really in excellent condition. We are going to try to measure that capacitor there. Yeah, nothing I can see that would prevent this from working, except for that one little cap there. I don't think there's more caps on this. And I think the exact same thing happened on my Amiga 1200 disk drive. I'm talking about this little capacitor here, right? in front of the mechanism. So it's going to be difficult to get in there, but yeah, should be doable. There's a bit of space on top here. 
it's pretty tight but i don't want to take this apart any more than necessary because uh yeah it's very difficult to align, align these I'm going to try to measure this thing and see if that's uh actually bad it doesn't look bad actually but yeah with these uh this era of surface mount electrolytic capacitors it's always suspicious, like from the early 90s to the mid 90s, they didn't really have that manufacturing process down and all these are leaky, basically. All of them I've seen from that era. And the exact same fault happened on my Amiga 1200 and uh, putting a new capacitor in there fixed that immediately. So my hopes are quite high. So I got my little ESR meter out and I'm going to see if I can reach the little solder pads there so let's see okay that's 1.22 microfarad it's not really accurate in circuit let's try that again but uh, that would be way too low yeah i think i got the pads there and it's definitely way too low so this capacitor is bad 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 super bad that might be the whole issue here. Yeah, let's desolder that uh, in some reasonable way and let's try to replace it. Let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs of all kinds. They can also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding. The pricing is super reasonable, quality is excellent as far as I can tell, and delivery is fast. So I highly recommend checking out the link in the video description. Back to our Amiga disk drive. Probably won't be super easy. Just using some hot air probably. And me tweezers. <laughs> Should be able to reach in there. Uh, yeah. That should be doable. Let's see. I'm getting pretty close here to the solder joints because I don't want to damage anything else. Oh, and it smells fishy as well. Fishy smell always means leaked electrolyte. Yeah, we're getting there. There we are. Ooh, okay, that looks pretty bad <laughs> underneath actually. Sorry if you couldn't see any of the process, but you can see the bad pad here. That looks nasty. This definitely leaked. That's what it looks like underneath. Brown, crusty, crispy. Yeah, we're going to have to clean that up really good and then put another capacitor in there, I guess. <laughs> There's the little bugger. Maybe you can see the leakage under there as well. Nothing to see from the top side, but yeah. This is definitely gone. So let's clean up the residue with some uh, isopropanol at first. If you smell something fishy, <laughs> literally it smells like fish, when uh, working on electrolytic capacitors, yeah, that cleans up really nicely. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> Quite some dirt coming off there. That probably was leaky for a long time and uh, just recently ceased functioning altogether. Yeah, I'm going to use a healthy amount of isopropanol around this area here. I don't know if there is a healthy amount of any kind of alcohol, but uh, you know what I mean. We can see the white markings underneath again. Yay! And I actually found a replacement. Should be equivalent to the one that was in there before, I think. Yep, that's the same size. So we shall use this one. And we're going to have to clean the pads with my regular soldering iron, I think. Going to remove all the uh, original solder that's still left on there with some solder wick. And then put some fresh solder on there. And I hope I can get in there enough to solder this new one in. You can use uh, through-hole parts for this. Uh, that's what I did for my Amiga 1200. Of course, it's electrically the same, if not better. But yeah, and this is the way this goes in there with the negative, which is marked facing outside. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit just with some solder wick and my regular soldering iron. And then we're going to try 
to get in there without melting too much of the plastic. Oh, can just remove this. <laughs> this needs a good cleaning anyway. Going to try to remove as much of the old solder as I can. And then solder in the new 10 microfarad 35 volts capacitor. And yeah, for my Amiga 1200, I just used a through hole part and bend it over to the side so the disc would not be interfered with. And that works ever since. Didn't make a video about that, I don't think. So just removing the solder here should be relatively easy to do. And then we clean it up again and put some fresh solder and some uh, flux on there. I hope this is visible on camera. Yeah, you can see it a bit. It's super difficult to film, obviously, because it's such a small piece. Yeah, some flux and some fresh solder on the back pad here. There we are. Then we take our capacitor with my tweezers and we're going to put even more flux on that. Also on the capacitor. Can remove that afterwards, of course. So I'm just going to take my tweezers here. Why am I always drinking coffee <laughs> when I'm doing something like this? So heated up the solar. I think it should be on there. Yeah, that actually doesn't look too bad. And then we just go in and give that a drop of solder and hope for the best, basically. There we are, that should be connected. If you wanted to do this really properly, you would have to take the whole circuit board out of there. But I guess this is going to have to do. It looks reasonable. Some cleaning up with some IPA here. Just removing the new flux I added. Let's see if this actually fixed the issue. Oh, before trying if that fixed it, uh, we can clean this worm gear here also with some IPA and then re-lubricate it. You can use uh, white lithium grease or this stuff here, silicon grease which I like to use because it was what they used originally, I think. Just clean off as much as you can of the old black gunk that's on there and put some grease on there. And then we're going to clean the heads also with IPA under here. Yeah, if everything goes according to plan, this should be working as good as new after that. Just going to put a small amount of grease on here, which is going to work its way in there. As soon as this is in use. There's two heads in here, one on this top thing here and one on the bottom. And uh, in order to clean these, I'm just soaking a Q-tip with some IPA and very carefully go in there. move it around a bit. Don't want to knock these loose, which happened to me before. You can basically uh, scrap the drive after that. But these look relatively clean. They seem to be super clean, no dirt on the Q-tip. If my theory is correct and it was just this little capacitor here, this should now work fine again. Let's see! Oh, and we should not forget to clean this thing here. I'm just using some window cleaner for our eject button. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to go, I think. Yep, looking good. This looks really clean, so no matter cleaning that again. So carefully, gently, gingerly, putting this back in here. 
with the connectors the correct way around as we marked. I'm just going to put one screw in here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put this halfway back together, I think. Probably connecting this here as well. Okay, let's hook it up and see if that did the trick. So, found myself some Amiga discs, including Amiga Test Kit, which is the first thing I want to try. Let's see if this boots up. So of course, not recommended doing this with the case halfway closed, but I don't know if we're going to have to look at this again. Let's see if this boots. Power light still comes on. Amiga still resets. Nothing from the disk drive. Oh. Yeah, there we are. Disk drive. Yay! Didn't do that before. Nice. I think we fixed it. Let's see if the uh, if the alignment is uh, halfway all right. Let's do the floppy disk drive test. That's F3. Let's do the signal test. That looks good. Motor on off. Motor is running. Motor is off. Step. Yeah, that looks good. So it is reacting again and the stepper motor, we can just step this basically all the way. So our lubricant <laughs> gets uh, distributed. Uh, but what I really wanted to do is to do the read test and see if our heads are aligned halfway correctly. This is not the most in-depth test, but you can at least see uh, with a floppy disk that is writ was written on a well-aligned well disk drive, which this one was, I think, uh, you can see if the alignment is mostly correct. So if this is all green zeros, I am satisfied. Yay! That looks very good to me. So this is even properly aligned. It was just that capacitor, as I suspected. I always kind of hear the bing sound of xcopy when I run this, but it's not xcopy, clearly. I never participated in any acts of piracy back in the day. It was just that little capacitor, it seems. Everything I tried works again. There's going to be some more videos about this Amiga 600 because it's giving me some issues, but uh, nothing major. I want to make this a reliable machine to play with and work with again. That's it for today. I hope this was informative and maybe even a bit entertaining. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon or on Coffee or on the YouTube channel memberships page or elsewhere. The links are on my website and in the video description. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.